Hey guys, this is Kwani here from The Bookkeeping Experts. I'm back for more, more education on QuickBooks Online. We're approaching the end of the year and a lot of you are kind of falling behind and thinking, how am I going to clean up my books and bring it up to date? Not only that, if you find out exactly where you stand financially, you can still plan on a few things you can do to avoid the big, big taxes at the end of the year. So, of course, taxes is very important. It's one important part that we keep our books, but it's not the most important part. The most important part, part is to understand where you stand, where you are, and where you want to go. So, for this reason, today we're going to focus on how to clean up your books, and today is for non-accountants. We do have a video for accountants, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that next week but this week is for you business owners and users that want to understand how to do how to clean up your books and get it ready before it's too late <laughs> all right okay we're going straight into QuickBooks all right here is our trial account and there's a few things that I want to show you okay first of all uh, it, the, the first step you should take is to take a look at your chart of accounts on the left hand side if you click on accounting and here is a little bit different transactions and chart of accounts you can get there several ways you can click on the gear menu click all list and uh, chart of accounts is going to be here so there's several ways to get there and for some of you it's going to be um, accounting here and then you get there as well so there there's different ways to get there but you know all takes to the same place okay so that's your chart of accounts the number one thing you want to check is your bank accounts you want to make sure that all bank accounts that are connected here okay has those two little arrows which means it's connected to the bank now you want to have just the necessary accounts as well. And some of you may have some bank accounts that is not connected, but you're bringing those transactions uh, manually through an Excel spreadsheet. That's fine too. But you want to make sure that the only accounts that you have here, bank accounts and, and credit card accounts, are the, one, the ones that you are using and, uh, and preferably the ones that are connected straight to the bank because those, those transactions are coming straight right now um, if there is a lot of bank accounts that are not meant to be here you want to make sure you check them and you clean them up uh, you can't just disconnect without clearing the balance so you want to make sure you clear the balance to zero before you make it inactive okay especially those accounts that have big balances um, and sometimes those balance belong to different accounts but ended up being recorded there there so for those you want to take a look at them and, and see where those transactions belong um, there's one account that's not going to be connected and that's your petty cash or your cash on hand you, and you want to check those accounts and verify if those transactions are being correctly being updated there so uh, verify duplicate uh, duplicated expense account duplicated asset accounts anything that needs to be checked on the chart of accounts you can clear it clear it out very important that you don't have too many accounts on your chart of uh, chart of accounts if not it gets out of hand and when you read your profit and loss and balance sheet it's really complicated because there's all those accounts right so you want to keep it to a minimum just organize it it's kind of like organizing your household <laughs> you know you want to make sure everything is in place okay the second thing is that you will need to start cater if you have not categorized all your transaction you want to go to transactions bank transactions and make sure you categorize everything now if you have app apps connected to your uh, to your QuickBooks account uh, remember the workflow so you first enter your app transactions and then you match into banking and uh, keep in mind that if you're entering those transactions your app transactions as far as Square Shopify it's gonna be here Amazon eBay all those are gonna be right here coming through and you can add them and then you know it's going to be matched in banking here you need to match them in banking right well Shopify is a little different we're going to talk about that later another day not today all right um, uh, the other thing you need to check okay after um, 
you you check and you categorize all transactions is to verify if there is any uh, deposits or payments that you recorded but have not recorded the deposit and matched in banking. So those transactions are going to be here and you want to make sure you find those transactions in banking and that you uh, record those deposits uh, exactly for the amount that hit the bank. Uh, if not, it's not going to match and you're going to duplicate it and you, get, you want to record those transactions. Now, if it is out of hand, like if you have a bunch of transactions, I have I had a customer that had uh, 50 something page or 100 pages or whatever of duplicate or not duplicate or of uncategorized transact. Oh, sorry, undeposited, <laughs> uh, undeposited funds or uh, payments to deposits that needed to be clear uh, because of an integration problem. A lot of times is because um, the, the, you know, over the years you have recorded your payments there, but never actually matched in banking. So um, I have uh, several videos on how to clean up your own undep undeposited funds. So that's one thing that you need to do. So first, categorize all transactions. If you don't know what it is, you can't put it on uncategorized uh, transaction or uncategorized income or expense so that you can go over those transactions later and verify what those are. Yeah, and here, you know, some transactions that needs to be matched. Uh, you want to make sure that you match everything that needs to be matched and that you use rules to be able to make your life easier. Now, be careful with rules. I talked about that before. You don't want to use rules for checks because those uh, QuickBooks can never read checks. You want to go over those one by one. And um, you want to make sure you match those transactions that have, uh, you know, you have recorded them before manually. Um, all right. So categorizing, categorize everything, use rules to go f faster, but make make sure you be careful with the rules. Like I said, don't just create rules for checks and transactions that could be multiple things such, get, such as Amazon or, you know, a Walmart it could be supplies, it could be uh, office uh, expense and so on and so forth. So you want to make sure that you only create those rules to those transactions that is always the same. And you can do an out of rule, uh, uh, the out of rule, out of rule, and we went through this before. Um, okay, so I'm gonna create one for you. So I'm gonna put here that this, this is a rental. We don't have a rental. I'm just gonna add a rental. This is our trial account and I'm going to categorize as equipment rental. I think they have equipment rental. Yep, equipment rental. And then I'm going to create a rule. I'm going to call a rental. And uh, out of checking, sometimes you want to click all bank accounts, okay? Because it's always the same. And the description is a rental. Sometimes you may have uh, more conditions that you can add to uh, specify, you know, if a transaction is more than $100, then it's, it's this kind of categorization. If it is less, then it's something else, okay? Uh, payee is very important. You need to put the payee. Okay, I want to put the A rental here. Oh, okay, A rental is spelled. Oh, another customer, so I should it's saying here that I just created this account, so I can't create it again. Okay. Um, a rental. Yep, there it is. Okay, I was just misspelling. There it is. Okay, it's very important to put the P. Uh, maybe this purchase is always for the same customer, but it's not very likely. So you don't have to put anything on customer. And sometimes you can't tag those expenses if you know it's, if it's always the same tag, right? So you can test the rule here, make sure, you know, it's it's working here. It says there's two transactions and I'm going to do the auto, re auto add. So that means any transactions 
that has these conditions will be added automatically now and in the future so that helps a lot so that's how rules w works and like i said you got to be careful you want to make sure you only set up rules for those transactions that you know it's always the same okay now next <laughs> after you categorize everything and this is completely clear it's trying to it's time to reconcile the account okay to reconcile the account well, you got you can actually go into the bank account or you can go here but go to bank register reconcile and you're going to take a look at your bank statement and you want to do this uh, you want to reconcile all your bank accounts and your credit cards first okay you're going to put your uh, ending balance and the ending date according to the bank statement and start reconciling and we talked about reconciling before a true reconciliation means that every single transaction is checked out I'm, I'm just going to put a number here because you know remember this account is not uh, it's just a trial account okay I'm gonna put as September now if the balance is off from the beginning you want to make sure that one you select this button here it's it's selected except for transactions that clear on the following month if you want to find out if there is anything that clear the following month you can clear click on clear date and oh by the way this is not a true account, but if it is a true account that is connected, you see the green flag on every single transaction. The ones that doesn't have the green flag, you can have to take a look because most likely that could be like a manual transaction that didn't get clear. Okay, uh, this 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 is all manually entered because it's a it's just a simple account. So um, obviously this is not correct. So if the balance is off, you checked. Um, you checked all the transactions you want to be able to update the balance before you start reconciling the first the, the, the rest of the month so that means you can do a journal entry at the beginning of the year uh, you know you you want to start in maybe do something for December last year to clear so that January or you can do it for January first to make sure the beginning balance is correct and you can reconcile so you can you know you can do a journal entry for transactions that you you're not gonna dig in because if this uh, this taxes are already filed you you don't want to go there so you're just gonna do a journal entry to adjust the balance and match it to whatever is in here uh, let me duplicate this page I like to duplicate it uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. okay so we one on we have that reconciliation page two we got we're gonna enter that journal entry I like to have it so I can have it as a reference like I said I like to go the beginning of the year to bring the balance up to date or you know you can reconcile up to December the, the year before 31st and bring that balance up to up to date there so uh, first I'm gonna you know sometimes here we have more payments than um, than the deposit so I'm gonna go ahead and debit this account to bring it up to date it's a positive amount means that it's off by you know by expenses uh, so I'm gonna select the bank account okay, that's the checking and this is the amount that we need to adjust to bring it up to date okay so we're just bringing this account up to date and then uh, on the second line I'm gonna you know sometimes you got to put it under retained earnings um, it's going to be an equity account anyways some people don't like to put on retained earnings so you're your you can create an account called prior year uh, accounting discrepancy or you can call whatever so you can track that on a separate account that's fine or you can put it in retained earnings but it, you know at the end of the day you have to put it there anyway so because we are not going this is not going years past because books are already reconciled oh I'm sorry the tax are already filed you don't want to mess that up right so we're gonna save and close here and uh, and now I have I'm gonna refresh if I click on uh, bank register and then reconcile I'm, I'm refreshing the page and now I have a button here because it means I have a transaction that I just entered so I can zero out the balance and there it is I I brought the difference up to date and I'm I can finish it now 
and I'm ready to start reconciling the other months and bring it, you know, making sure that everything is correct. All the transactions are reconciled. To make sure the reconciliation is right, you can go to bank register and you see it's reconciled up to September. I, I don't put anything on the front date, the two date I'm gonna put up to September 30th and the reconciliation status is not reconciled and apply. If there is transactions here, means that there's probably errors on the reconciliation and you need to correct them. You need to clear any transaction that doesn't belong here. If there's transaction that, um, that was recorded to the checking account, but it never happened there, you can modify them. You can go into the bank account, click on edit and change the bank account. Let's suppose that this actually was supposed to go into savings or maybe it was a cash transaction. So you wanna make sure you change this bank account, save and close, and voila, okay? So yes, so that's one thing that we need to do is uh, reconcile the account. All right, um, enter all the cash transactions. Make sure you enter all the cash transactions. This, this is gonna be a very long process. So we're gonna divide this video into more than one. <laughs> <laughs> one video so for today this is all that we are gonna cover so the first part of the video so next time we're gonna talk about um, a cash transaction how to add uh, how to add them okay manually and then how to clear and then we're gonna talk about uh, how to enter your assets and liability um, and uh, reconcile your your liability, your equity and asset accounts, and how to check your profit and loss and balance sheet to make sure that everything is accurate. So this is the first part of the cleanup. Next week, we're gonna come back for more. So stay tuned. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go back here. Okay, here I am, yay, I'm back, okay. All right, so I hope you like that. This is the first part, part one of how to clean up, how to approach a clean up a uh, project for non-accountants because for accountants you you have different tools you have for bookkeepers accountants you have different tools you have more tools to do the clean up and we have a video on that and we're going to talk more about that as well okay so i hope this was useful so this is the first part of your clean up so what do you have to do first Take a look at your chart of accounts. Eliminate any duplication in there, right? Duplication. Second, categorize all those bank transactions and make sure that you set up the rules to work for you, not against you. <laughs> and you can always, you know, there's a video on rules. You can go to my video on rules to verify how to, uh, you can delete them or you can update them, clear them, make sure that all, all you have is the good ones, okay? And then uh, reconcile. You got to reconcile the accounts. Make sure you reconcile the account. Make sure that everything is done correctly. Okay, that's the first part. There's more things that you, you want to do to bring your books up to date. We're going to talk about that next week. Um, if you like this video, if you like this content, please click on the subscribe uh, button down below, uh, share with your friends, share with your coworkers. Uh, we want to help as many people as possible and we can only help as many people as possible if you share these videos, if you share your content, um, share it on your social medias, share, share when you're talking to you, whatever, just share with your friends so we can help as many people as possible. Now, if you need a one-on-one -on -one approach, uh, we do have one-on-one -on -one tutorials. Uh, you can, you can uh, contact us down below and you can hire us for, for that. If you want to do a cleanup so that you can uh, get to a point where you can take over later, that's we can also help you with that feel free to contact us and if you need just to hire somebody to to take care of your book so you can relax and focus on your business hey we can do that as well all right so hopefully this was useful to you write down below what's your biggest challenges or your biggest question when approaching your cleanup and we can cover that uh, for you on next time and thank you so much for watching and spending this time with me we're gonna see you next week and until next time keep on smiling <laughs>